Hey, good morning, everybody, and happy Monday. Again, uh, thanks to John King and the crew for taking over last week while I was on vacation. Sure appreciate it. Thanks, John. Our pleasure. All right. We have a special guest in the studio from Providence Health and Services, Western Montana, and this is really exciting because I love naturopathy. Did I say it right? Naturopathy or yeah. naturopathic medicine. Yes. Naturopathic medicine. Okay, we, we have Elizabeth Steg, doc, Dr. Elizabeth Stegmeyer with us this morning, and you are a, a doctor of naturopathy. Yes, I am. Peter. Okay. Thanks so, so much for having me. You bet. So tell us, tell me a little bit about how you got interested in this subject, because I think it's fascinating. Sure. So when I was growing up, my father is a physician as well. He's a cardiologist, and I was really inspired by um, watching him with his patients. And this was back before HIPAA, so I used to go on rounds with him in the hospital <laughs> and <laughs> stand okay. at the doorway and, right. um, and watch him do his thing, and I was really inspired. Uh, what I wanted to do, however, was be able to offer more than just prescription medicines. So I started looking around at different programs and found naturopathic medicine and decided it was for me. So now for the for those who are not familiar, we probably, uh, most people probably identify a naturopathy with, well, it's vitamins, you know, or, but it's uh-huh. it's much broader than that. What, what What is a naturopath anyway? It is broader than that, Peter. Uh, naturopathic doctors are licensed in the state of Montana as primary care physicians. And we're trained to take really comprehensive health evaluations. Oftentimes that means longer visits. And something that I always explain to my patients is that my approach is a whole body approach, a whole systems approach. So I may ask a lot of questions that seem unrelated to the particular symptom that they're presenting with. But for me, I'm trying to put all the pieces together. And I think that's something that stands out from our training as well. And then the methods that we involve, that we uh, uh, initiate for treatment are broader than just prescription medications. So when safe and when indicated, I offer botanical medicines, or that would be herbs. Um, We talk about nutrition, lifestyle modifications, and then sometimes single vitamins and nutrients. Let's talk about nutrition for a minute, because it's one of the exciting things I wanted to talk to you about. Because, you know, I I think people forget that there are there are ways to treat your body yourself by just eating good foods and and not eating bad foods. So so when someone sits down with you and you start talking about nutrition, what kind of questions do you ask them? Well, I usually start by asking what's a typical breakfast. And I remind people that breakfast, when you break that word down, means break the fast. That means that you've been all night fasting and it's time to eat. And so a lot of people tell me that they don't eat breakfast. So that's that's one of my first recommendations is to have a, a breakfast that includes protein. So not just a bowl of cereal or not just a cereal bar, um, but something that may have some protein such as breakfast meats, eggs, um, cheese. So it's okay to eat breakfast meats. I, I'm so excited to hear that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't just have to exist on toast and stuff like that, right? No, no, All I'm right. a proponent for breakfast meats for sure. Okay. Well, what, what would happen if somebody came to you and said they have Cheetos and Dr. Pepper for breakfast? You know, I think the biggest issue... <laughs> <laughs> that would <What>? be me. <laughs> I know it's terrible. I come to work at three in the morning, all right? And my stomach just isn't ready for any real food yet. So yeah, just you may kind of... have to bring breakfast to work and eat it here at the yeah. station. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So as you, as you continue to talk with them, do you kind of develop, okay, I'm listening to you. I'm kind of hearing that you're eating this and you like this and don't like this. What kind of suggestions do you make to them to help them just kind of nudge them along on the mm-hmm. right nutritional path? Mm-hmm. Typically, there's always a conversation about sugar intake. And I would say that's the biggest issue that I see and, and probably a, a large public health issue as well is just our overall consumption of sugar. And that would include things like high fructose corn syrup, which is they, the companies sneak that into a lot of different products. So that, that ends up uh, requiring that you're reading labels. Sure. Now, is is there a difference as you found as as a naturopath between you know traditional garden produce and organic produce, or, or are they are you pretty much okay with either one? You know, I I send my patients to a list. It's called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean Fifteen, oh, and those cool. would okay. yeah. Those can, would, can you go through those with us? You know, it, it, I don't think I have them memorized, okay, but I ha- just top of the yeah top yeah. of the trees. Yeah. So the for instance the uh, Dirty Dozen. Those would be the the types of produce that are most heavily used with pesticides and also the pesticides that are on the skin of the fruit that you eat, for example, a berry. Right. So berries are sprayed and then you're consuming the, the outside of the fruit versus, let's say, a banana. So berries are on the dirty dozen, bananas are on the clean 15. So I direct my patients to that list. and But I, I say eat vegetables. And so if it's organic, go for it. If it's not 
still eat them. Sure, sure. So now I have heard it said that when you go into the grocery store, it's probably best to just go around the perimeter because that's where the, 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 if you will, the cleanest foods are. And as you get closer to the middle where all the processed foods are, probably a good idea not to do the aisle thing back and forth, right? Well, the outside of the, the grocery store, the perimeter is going to have the fresh food, the produce, the dairy, the cheese, the meat, the things that are coming in and out of the store most frequently versus the stuff that's sitting on the shelves in the cans and in the um, different packaging. So when, 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 you, uh, when, some, when people begin to take your advice about good nutrition, uh, what kind of changes do you, uh, do you see in them and how long does it take to affect those kinds of changes nutritionally? I would say the two biggest changes that I see, it oftentimes depends on the goals of the patient but I see weight loss and I see energy changes, increases in energy. Okay, cool. All right, we're talking right now with Dr. Elizabeth Stegmeyer. She is a, a naturopathic doctor, and uh, she works for Providence Health and Services in Western Montana. I'm just full of questions I want to ask. It's 721-1290. If you have a question, give us a call. John will take your question, and we'll pass it along to Elizabeth at 721-1290. We'll be right back in just a moment. We're back on Health Talk, sponsored by uh, Providence Health and Services Western Montana. Dr. Elizabeth Stegmeyer is joining us here in studio. She was a, a naturopathic doctor. And I want to talk a little bit about the schooling that's required to be a, a naturopath. Obviously, the, the, this is, uh, you know, the, you're a doctor, so you, you had to go to years and years of schooling, right? It's a lot, Peter. It makes me tired just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, we have a four year undergrad degree with a completion in pre medical sciences followed by four years of a federally accredited medical school. The first two years focusing on the basic medical sciences, very similar to what conventional medical doctors learn. And then the second two years of school are uh, learning the clinical application of naturopathic medicine. I had to take two sets of boards, uh, basic science boards and clinical boards. And I completed a two-year residency after that. My first year was in general medicine, and my second year was focusing on women's health. Okay. So now, there, from what I understand, there are, there's allopathic uh, uh, medicine and there's naturopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. And what, what Providence is doing is, is melding those two together so they can work cooperatively, right? Yeah, it's really exciting, Peter. Um, my residency was an integrative medicine residency, so I've always had a strong interest in working in an integrative setting. And so what that means is that for the for two years, I was rotating through medical doctor specialist offices and learning uh, alongside medical doctors, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, um, and really learning how to incorporate my skill set into um, an integrative setting. And so I feel like my job at St. Pat's is to really bridge that gap between the alternative and the conventional medicine. So it's, it, it's, it's also people need to know that you can also prescribe medication too, right? I can. I have a list of different types of classes of drugs that I can prescribe. And I do prescribe medications um, when, when I can't prescribe more naturopathic treatments to okay. get the results that I need. So now why, why would somebody choose, let's say we go to Providence and we've got a problem, maybe, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, why, why would I choose to see a naturopath over just my traditional, you know, Dr. Smith or whatever mm -hmm. uh, that I, I usually see? Mm -hmm. I've seen, uh, I've been in private practice for about three years in Missoula prior to joining Providence. And I see two trends on how people and end up in my office. The first would be an ND perspective on complex cases. So these people have been seen by their primary care, maybe seen by several specialists, and they're not satisfied with how they feel, mm -hmm. yet really serious conditions have been ruled out. And that's really helpful to me when someone shows up in my office and I know that they've had the appropriate workup Yet they're not feeling. They're still not feeling well. Like like I don't have cancer and I don't have diabetes and mm -hmm. I don't have endometriosis or whatever. You know all mm -hmm. the traditional things that make me feel oogie or bit. Is that a word oogie? <laughs> <laughs> it make me feel you know un unwell. Okay, mm -hmm. and so I'm saying I'm going to go talk to you because maybe you'll have a different way of looking at it. different perspective. Yeah, yeah. So that would be the first trend. The second would be patients who who prefer my philosophy of care. So they want to be spending more time with their physician. They want to have alternative options uh, for when indicated and safe. Um, and, and so those are sort of the two, two different types. You just said something that really rung a bell with me, and, and that is you spend a lot of time with your patient, okay? Mm -hmm. I know one of the criticisms of 
traditional medicine is, oh, gosh, I'm in and out in 10 minutes, and I didn't get a chance to ask questions, and I forgot the question I was going to ask. But but you, you what I hear you saying is you're sitting down face-to-face with somebody for an extended period of time. Let's go through. Could you just kind of go through a standard uh, interview of what you talk to folks about? Sure. So my office visits are typically about 60 minutes right wow, now. Wow, that's great. It is great. Okay. And, and it's great to be part of the Women's Care and Family Wellness Center because that particular clinic really values spending a lot of time with our patients. So even the other providers in my office, we have slightly longer office visits, which enables us to have longer conversations and um, go more in-depth with our patients' health care and their current complaints. And things that we that I talk about with every patient, like we mentioned earlier, would be food choices. So mm-hmm. what are they eating during the day? Right. Sleep. Are they sleeping at night? A big thing that I, that I love to talk to every patient about is stress. It's really easy for patients to assume that stress means, um, you know, relationships or work, um, parenting. But stress can also be things like um, sleeplessness that's stressful on your body. Um, or exercise. John, John's looking at me like Peter should be dead. I was like, <laughs> "Are we doing this live? Are we actually?" I'm not sure if this is HIPAA qualified. I did get a little concerned for you when you said you were here by 3 a.m. <laughs> I, I am usually. I'm here by about 3:30, and and uh, my day ends much later than that. Yeah. So, but yeah. I love my work. So, does, right. does that make a difference if you really like what you do? And it, it does. I, I think you have to be careful. You have to take care of yourself and watch your health and not burn out. Yeah. Um, well, it's only been 42 years, so yeah. okay. <laughs> I think burnout is coming eventually. <laughs> so so let, let's continue the interview. We, we yeah, talked so about stress, sleep and stress. And- sleep um, and, and then just a long conversation about the presenting symptom and a lot of talk about digestion typically. Mm-hmm. So I'm wanting to see how people are digesting their foods. and um, like, like, for instance, if someone was to come in and say, you know, I just... Doggone it, Dr. Stegmeyer, I just don't feel well. I just, you know, I, I used to have energy. I used to be able to, you know, face the day in the morning, and now I'm kind of I'm not really depressed, but I've done not my usual happy self, and people are commenting about it. My boss is commenting about it. My kids, I don't want to play with them. You know, I, I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. And so I've, I've seen my regular doctor say, you're only you're not sick. You know, you don't have any of these big diseases. Mm-hmm. And so you can help get to the bottom of that, right? Yeah. And I would definitely take a look at blood tests as well and make sure that, that the appropriate testing has been run and uh, review those lab results. If all of that is normal, then that's when we start looking at um, more unconventional reasons why someone could be tired. Okay. All right. And then what? Yeah. What happens after that? What, what kind of steps do you take to help make things happen for, for, the, for the patient? Mm-hmm. One of the things that I really like about naturopathic medicine is that we have some specialty testing that we offer. And so these are tests that are not routinely run by conventional doctors, but can be really helpful. And so I might perhaps recommend some specialty testing to either um, look at different hormones, look at digestive health, um, and then review those results at the at the next appointment and and go from there. Okay. Now, you had mentioned you work a, a, a lot with women, uh-huh. yeah, the special women's clinic there. What kind of special needs do you find that women have that men usually are <laughs> get, get a chance to escape from, if you will? So, Well, I would say the biggest issue, are, our hormones are more complex than, mm-hmm. than men's, and we also go through several different major hormonal, uh, hormonal changes throughout our life. So well, there's pregnancy there's and there's pregnancy, menopause. And, there's yeah. menopause. Right. And then every month there's a period. And that means that hormones are shifting every month. And so th- th- there are special ways of dealing with that. So go ahead, John. Yeah, we have a call in from Richard, and he wanted to know, uh, from a naturopath's point of view, how the smoke affects the body, the smoke that's outside in Missoula recently. Stay inside. <laughs> <laughs> no extra charge for that. Yeah, no, I yeah. think... Um, it's it's concerning for the same population that the newspaper articles are are um, asking to stay indoors. So children and the elderly and anyone with compromised lung function. Um, and I, and I would say if you don't have to be outside right now, stay stay inside. What would you say to the gentleman, the the man Richard I spoke with? He works outside as his job. Um, and if, rather than call off work, is there anything that he can do? He might want to consider wearing a mask. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, respiratory mask. We're going to come right back. Dr. Elizabeth Stegmeyer, a naturopathic doctor at uh, Women's Care and Family Wellness at Providence Western Montana. If you have a question or comment, give us a call, 721-1290. We will be right back. We're back on Health Talk. Sponsored by Providence Health and Services, Western Montana. Special guest in studio, Dr. Elizabeth Stegmeyer, a naturopathic doctor. And uh, again, welcome back. You, we wanted to have to add uh, something about the comments about smoke outside. I, I did, Peter. I wanted to recommend using an air filter at home or leaving the air conditioner on, even though it's not that hot right now. Both of those things can help, at least when you're in the home, not be exposed to the smoke as as severely as when you're outside. Sure. One of the things, John just brought something up uh, during the break, and that was the fact that there, when, when you uh, prescribe or suggest herbs or natural solutions to people, uh, you, you are using uh, herbs that have been tested by an independent third party, right, to make sure that they're pure and effective? I do. Yeah. I do. I, I exclusively recommend professional-grade supplements, and including herbs and nutrients, which means that they generally cannot be sold to the general public. They have to go through a healthcare really? provider. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. And there are various ways that we have our patients order these supplements. Um, and that way we know that what we're giving the patient is what's in the bottle. And that's not the case when you're walking into a supermarket, for instance. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you walk into the average supermarket or big box store. And you can have aisles and aisles of, of, you know, the natural, 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 and you don't really know that right. it is, right? Right. During the break, we were talking about a particular herb called black cohosh, which is well-researched uh, to treat, to effectively treat uh, hot flashes during menopause. But it's a particular extract of that herb at a particular dose that works and that has been proven to work. And that's what I recommend to my patients. But that's not always what's on the shelf. Sure. And of course... The part of the herb that doesn't work is probably going to be cheaper. So it's going to be at, at that grocery store, and, and it's not going to work for your hot flashes, most likely. Well, yeah, because well, I tried black cohosh, but it didn't work. Well, that's because, you know, it, 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 the, the, this is a very specialized area, right? And, and so you have to have, you have to know your stuff, and that's one of the reasons you went to school for so long. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> so what do you enjoy most about what you do? Well, I love working with my patients. I like I like to get people feeling better. Um, my goal is usually to to work with people. I would say th- three to four times, and then have them be feeling like we've moved past the symptom that they had originally presented with, and are feeling good. So I'm not the type of provider that I want to be seeing patients, you know, once a week for for several months. Um, I like to see people get better and then bump into them at the farmer's market. Sure. Now, now, when, when you work with the, your allopathic, fellow allopathic positions at St. Patrick Hospital, how, how does that relationship work? Do you just kind of uh, suggest back and forth with each other? Do you meet together over certain over uh, patients and find out what the best way to treat them? That's a really good question, Peter. The reason why I ended up at, at Providence was because I was sharing so many patients with the providers at Women's Care and Family Wellness. We would spend our, our evenings before leaving work on the phone discussing patients and we would be sending chart notes back and forth through the fax machine. We should just be working together here. Exactly. Yeah. And and now we can have those conversations in the office. Uh, if, we, if we're co-managing a patient, then we'll have, and it's a complicated discussion, we'll talk in person. Uh, we'll send chart notes back and forth now through, uh, I'm on the same system, so I can share my chart notes and all the providers in Providence can see what I'm doing. We've got about a minute and a half left in, in the program, believe it or not. You've been here a half an hour already. So give us some contact information and, and, and why we would want to choose a, a, a doctor of na- a naturopathic doctor uh, to, to make the call. Sure. So we can be reached at 406-327-3057. That's the Women's Care and Family Wellness Center, okay. which is the office where I work. All right. And we can also be uh, on the web at montana.providence.org. And I would say for... For interested patients that are wanting uh, collaborative care, so people that that want a naturopath on their medical team, I'm not here to replace your primary care doctor. I'm here to work together. And I think there's also the set of people that might be self-prescribing supplements and herbs and may just want a one-time consult to see if they're on the right track with what they're with what they're. Uh, trying to meet their goals. Well, yeah, because my brother-in-law suggested this and my sister-in-law suggested this and I'm taking both of them and I don't feel any better. <laughs> so, right? I, exactly. That happens a lot. Yeah, and then we also want to make sure that there aren't any interactions with pharmaceutical medications that you might be taking. Sure. Well, give us your give us your contact information one more time. That's 327-3057, montana.providence.org.
Right. It's been a pleasure. Want to, you want to come back? Absolutely. Thanks right. so much, Peter. All right. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Dr. Elizabeth Stegmeyer. She's a naturopathic doctor at Women's Care and Family Wellness at Providence, Western Montana. That's going to do it for Health Talk for this week. Join us again next Monday, 830 until 9, right here.